folks, Jason Wyke here of CITV. We are at the top of the first here at Plymouth White Marsh softball field. They just were able to retire the first pitcher. Zero zero is the score. Currently it is 87, a little bit hot, a little bit humid, but there's an 11 mile per hour wind blowing a little bit towards the third baseline. Don't think it'll be too much of a, uh, add, add too much of a challenge to any of the batters in today's game, as well as fielding. Uh, sun I thought was going to be a little bit of an issue, but it's actually with the clouds not really going to be too much in the fielder's eye. So the Colonials are currently 6-5, and five, third in the Liberty Division, looking today to pick up a big win versus a pretty talented William Tennant squad. Currently starter, starting pitcher for the Lady Colonials is number 6, that is Molly Moore, 2-0 -oh count. And swing and a miss, got her. That's the second out. Colonials looking for a quick top of the first here. And the batter's been hit there, so she will take her base. If you're tenant here, the first two batters are retired quickly, but Right here again, you got someone on. All it takes is one big hit. Break the scoreboard open. Colonials, the last three games are 3 0. You'll never guess this. They're outscoring their opponents 48 0. They put teams away quick, scoring often, and ending the game early. Nice pitch for a strike by Moore. Molly winding up, a little bit high. Runner will take second after a wild pitch, unable to be corralled by the catcher. Counts 1-1. One, one. With a runner on second now, now Tennant, they're, they're a little bit more comfortable here with this at bat. Swing and a miss, strike two. Colonials would like to see a third strike right here and this top of the first quickly. We have a foul ball behind home plate. Deep into the forest behind the uh, Lady Colonial softball field. Another foul ball, consecutive foul balls. I'm sure today a big emphasis for both these teams is making sure they stay hydrated. Very hot today. Low pitch, that'll be a ball. Two twos to count. Clonals here have a couple options, maybe a put out. And a swing and a miss, side is retired. Colonials will now get their bats out and try to get a crack at it here at the bottom of the first. So in the last four, the Colonials are three and one. Uh, they're, they're doing pretty good lately. They had a little bit of a shaky start to start the season, uh, reflecting those five losses. But the coach told me the team's really starting to come into their own. They're finding their heading again. 48 out, they're outscoring their opponents in three games. That is just cracking it open. One of the games they won 23 to zero for Sheltonham. So if that gives you any idea of how effective this batting order has been for the Colonials. Just waiting here for everyone to take the field. A little bit of action here with the district today as the boys baseball team is currently playing versus William Tennant. 
They're currently undefeated and on quite a roll this season, 10-0. We'll have coverage of them probably within the next couple weeks and maybe even playoffs. We're hoping both these teams can make the playoffs. And It's been a pretty productive spring so far. Funny, but last year at the pandemic, believe it or not, folks, I actually have not been able to come out to a softball game. So I was really excited when I saw that we were slated for some softball today. Lead off for the Colonials is number two, Carly Rosenberger. Rosenberger, one of the three seniors on the squad. Carly Rosenberger, Emmy, Emily Caffrey, and Regan Gaiman. Carly will be playing some more softball in college. So I'm sure a lot of these players hope to do. I know she played a lot of club softball throughout the years and very passionate member of this team. One of the leaders really since she started playing here and this year making her presence felt. We'll see her if she can crack things open with a leadoff hit. A little bit high, that will be a ball. We see here with her stance, she definitely has a very aggressive stance, looking to get a hit. With that front foot digging in, that's that's one of the biggest difference you'll see from a baseball stance and a softball stance, is really digging that front foot in, putting that power off the lead foot. It's almost kind of like uh, swinging a golf club, if you will, putting that power in the front and the hips twisting into the ball. Certainly a lot of arms involved, but it's really, it's a full body swing because of the size of a softball. Wiz is one low. I believe that will be a strike. Three, one count here for Rosenberger. She could play this one conservative. Again, anything outside the strike zone, you might as well take the free base. But if you're seeing something you like, you might as well bite into it. Swing and a miss. Full count here, three, two. This is where situational softball really comes into play. Again, having the at batters to know what they want in this certain scenario. Again, you don't want to bite. She did bite. It was a great pitch there for the strikeout. We see she's talking now to teammate number 13, Lauren Kane. Lauren Kane, obviously, I would equip. I would say the the Philadelphia Phillies historical equivalent to. Maybe like a Ryan Howard, just one of the best home run hitters on the squad. Consistently game in and game out is getting hits. She actually aggressively swings the first pitch. That will be an out at first. Colonials line up quickly. Moving through here. But again, she's just such a powerful bat. I believe she has seven home runs on the season. Quite impressive for high school softball. Will be a called strike one. This is Talia Carr, pop fly, and the first inning is in the books, 0-0. Zero, zero. So far, not really a hitter's paradise, but it's still early. We had one walk for Tenet that they were able to pick up last inning. So we are currently entering the second inning. Score is 0-0. Zero, zero. So far looking to be, ooh, we see there. Lauren Kane was throwing to her first baseman and uh, hit the leg there, which she seems okay. 
one of the big reasons why communication is so key out there in the field. Again, if you aren't on uh, the exact same page, it could lead to a lot of different issues, injuries, but really the biggest thing is possibly allowing runs off of wild throws you aren't prepared for. Moore winding, swing and a miss. That one was smoked by Moore. That was a great pitch. Really nice velocity right in the strike zone. Oh, one count. Pop fly. That will go back into the forest again. <laughs> There's the same unfortunate fan that has to keep getting up and picking those up. Actually, there'll be a lady colonial running down there. I was going to say, I would want no parts of going in there and getting my shoes all dirty. A little bit high. 2-1 count here for Tennant. We'll see here. Pitch, pitch selection in moments like these is really great here. Trying to get the strikeout. Swing and a miss. More so far. Feeling herself. One out here, top of the second. Moore with three strikeouts. We have a bunt. Kane trying to crowd the ball. And just hesitated a little bit. And that will get a runner on base. A little bit of an interesting uh, decision there. I We hear Kane communicating with her fellow teammates. A little bit of an interesting decision there. Uh, I, I think she maybe could have thrown her down, but after that shaky exchange during warm-ups, maybe she was a little bit apprehensive. We see another bunt here for Tenet. One out count. Another bunt. We hear the coach for Tennant saying, be a hitter. I think he, uh, they're trying to advance a runner with the bunt. It worked last at bat, but he wants to see him be a little more aggressive. Ball's a little bit high. 2-1 count here. See if Moore can throw yet again another strike out here. And a beautiful pitch. Again, they look so attractive when it leaves the hands. You're thinking, oh, I got a really nice piece of this one. I'm going to rip it. And it just it goes so quick at that last tail end of it. Two outs here. One on first. We have a bunt. And it's caught by the catcher. What a heads up play there. Kind of had to fall on the back feet to catch it. Really heads up play. Tenant will now go out to the field. The Colonials looking for their second crack at trying to get some runners on base. Wind picking up a little bit. Again, scoreless here. And the bottom of the second, 0-0. Zero, zero. Game's moving pretty quickly so far. A lot of defense, not a lot of offense. I'm sure both heading coaches want to see a little bit more out of their batters.
right, Colonials getting ready to get things going here. Bottom of the second, number 10, Hannah Sue, 11th grader. See if she can get that elusive first hit. Ball is high, ball one. Wind really picking up here. I know I said originally it wouldn't be a factor, but definitely for pitching, we're seeing the ball start to pick up a little bit. Getting out of the strike zone. That one dropping. Two balls here. For Sue, again, you don't need to be too aggressive. If, if there's two balls, chances are, with the first two pitches being that, oh, and she bites down, trying to outrun, and she will not. She's out at first. Saw there, it was an 0-2 count. She had a little bit of room to wiggle, and she decided to try to get a hit. Now we have number six, the pitcher Moore. That'll be a strike. One out here. Bottom of the second. I believe we might have had a little bit of a tip there. So two strikes here with the count. Here you got to kind of be aggressive. You got to get yourself back in this at bat. You got to keep a good eye too because there might be a ball that goes right by it. She will pop that one up, but I believe it will be towards Colonial Bench, and it is. Strikes here for more. <clears throat> you see the first baseman here just adjusting her hat. I think maybe running down one of those plays might have lost her lid. Two strikes, one out. And we have a ball. One ball, two strikes, one out. Bottom of the second. She was thinking she might want to bite down, but she was really nice. She saw it, didn't love it. Kind of pulled those hands back the last second. Two, two is the count for more. Calls time real quick. She's just going to adjust her glove. And a swing and a miss. Moore liked what she saw, but again, the ball got the better of her. Colonel's looking to try to get something going here offensively. A little bit of a dry spell early on here, very uncharacteristic of the past three games. This is Caffrey, one of the seniors. Number 20. Ooh, and that one, Kuntoff had caught a piece of her hand under the bat, caught a piece of the hand, so she will take her base. Up now is number 21, Julie Price. Calls quick time, steps back into the box. Two outs, bottom of the second, runner on first. Ball's popped up, but again, ooh, and that will be caught by the first baseman. Not a lot of hitting going on here for either side. Caffrey seen here with a little bit of um, 
on comfort with that hand that got hit. I mean, the ball whizzed right in and hit kind of that part of the palm that certainly would not feel nice to be hit in. Moore currently with four strikeouts. So we now begin the third. We're gonna have a substitute for Caffrey. So coming in for Caffrey, it'll be number five, Marissa Duddick. Hopefully uh, Caffrey's okay. Colonel's looking to keep up the very strong defense here. Quick stop at yours, Duddick trying to get set in the field. Zero, zero. Tenet really uh, fans of bunting today. This is the third batter we've seen, maybe even fourth batter we've seen attempt to bunt today. So all about trying to get people on base. High percentage, you know, hitting ability. Again, it's you're not promised that you're going to be safe at first, but you're definitely going to connect a lot of the times, batting the ball, obviously. Two strikes here for Moore, looking to get another K here. A little bit low, that'll be a ball. Two strikes, one ball. Just want to thank everyone again for tuning in to our live coverage here of Plymouth White Marsh Colonial Softball. And another bunt that will pop behind home plate. And I believe, yes, after three foul bunts, that is an out. So first out of the inning. High ball. <clears throat> and whizzes by the catcher. Two balls. For tenant here again, when you're when you're uh, two balls, no strikes, it's a nice zone to be in. You don't have to swing. Let one go by for a strike if you want. But she will line that one down, but it will be foul, looking like our first action of the day going down that third base line. But wind I think carried it just a little bit and made it foul. One strike, two balls here. Looking for that second out here of the third. Foul ball. I think they're trying to wake me up a little bit there as it uh, came over towards my crow's nest here on the bleachers. Two strikes, two balls, one out. 0 0, top of the third. And that one's popped up high down the third base line. Two Colonels trying to chase it, but just a little bit too far in that weird spot in between a infielder and outfielder. So that will be another opportunity here for Moore to try to strike out 
this batter here. And another foul ball. This is a great at bat here by Tennant. Again, you're trying to tire out more. She has four strikeouts. She's really feeling herself. Strike zone right now has been very impressive. You, you keep making her throw these pitches. Eventually, her arm is going to get tired. And a swing and a miss. Out at first. Five strikeouts now for Moore. Two outs here in the top of the third. Swing and a miss, strike one. And a foul ball. Again, another one that almost uh, came out towards me. I got a little scared. Hopefully that was on video. I had a nice little shimmy I did. 2-0 is the count. High for a ball. Two strikes, one ball. Two outs here, top of the third. Down the middle. I thought that could have been the last strike of the inning, but they'll call it a ball. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two's all across the top of that scoreboard. Popped up high, coming down the third baseline, and Kane will catch it for the last out of the inning. Again, uh, we saw the bats starting to heat up a little bit, but all in foul territory here for Tennant. So they're looking to try to get those into the field of play, get some runs in, get some momentum going. Bottom of the third here at the Lady Colonial softball field right next to Victory One, right behind Plymouth White Marsh High School. Couldn't ask for better spring weather on this day. You know, it was a little bit warm, but the wind is really generous today and helping to keep us from completely melting here. Both teams, I'm sure, are thankful they're wearing their white jerseys and not a jersey of another color that might, you know, add on to the heat. But the Colonial helmets are a dark color, so might make their heads a little bit warm. But again, that's only when you're wearing your helmet and batting, so. Not really too much of the game. You're going to have to worry about that. On deck now is number eight, Reagan Gaiman. Third and final senior to have their first at bat today. Gaiman actually a three-sport athlete. Now this season she was not, but throughout the course of her high school career, she did cheerleading, I believe freshman, sophomore year. Started field hockey back up junior year, and I believe has played softball throughout all four years. Fouls off of her first pitch. So she has had herself quite an athletically busy time here at Plymouth White Marsh. Down the middle. Two strikes here. Gaiman looking to try to bail herself out here with a nice hit. Swing! That one's driven out towards the field and it will be fair. Turning two, but she'll stop it first. Now there's a runner on first. 
Situational softball, always important here with a runner on base. Trying to get runs here in a game where runs are so few to come by. And we have a bunt, game in advance towards second. And dropped it first, so she will be safe. Very heads up, situational baseball by Marissa Perez. Now we're back to the top of the lineup. Rosenberger 0 for 1. She had a strikeout in the first. She signaled they could bunt, but did not. One strike here. We got Gaiman on second. Perez on first. Rosenberger bunting, but foul. Two strikes here. Count is working against Rosenberger. We'll see here if she signals bunt again. Swing and a miss. And now, I believe the moment that we've been waiting for Lauren Kane, two runners on, only one out. Her bat has been blasting in so many runs this season. We'll see. And wow, drills one right at the pitcher. She's running to first. She will be safe. And we have a quick time here by the ump. Coach is going to talk to his pitcher. Three consecutive hits here for the Colonials. They got Kane at first, Gaiman on third, Perez at second with one out. That is not an easy situation for a pitcher to be in. Again, Kane hit a low shot right at the feet of that pitcher. That definitely didn't feel good. We'll see if it impacts her throwing motion again because so much of the feet are involved in that windup. Colonials here looking to do some damage and get some runs. For Tennant, this will be a test of their defensive wit trying to keep these Colonials from driving in their first possible runs of the inning. Here's Carr, 0 for 1. Out at first and her last at bat. Pops that one up high, right over towards uh, the crow's nest yet again. One strike here, one out, bottom of the third. Three runners on base. Wind, swing and a miss here for Carr. Now for the Colonials here, this is not a great situation to be in because Carr, she's already got two strikes, no balls. She's going to have to be aggressive, and if she swings and misses, that's two outs. They'll call that a ball. Two strikes, one ball. In this situation, then, if she were to strike out, then you have two outs. Now you can't get a sack fly possibly to get some runs in. So really would like to see some contact here at this at bat. Low, really nice eye there by Carr, avoiding possibly giving up that strikeout like we're talking about. So now it's a 2-2 count. She's back alive. Now she has a little bit more wiggle room. Swing, that one's going towards first. She's out, but that will drive in a run. So the Colonials will officially christen this game with the first run. 1-0, they lead it. Game and able to get to home. And now we have Hannah Sue. She's currently 0 for 1. One ball here for Sue. 
A little bit low. Another ball. Runner on second and third here for the Colonials. Two outs, two balls, bottom of the third, 1-0. They lead it. And I believe it's fair. Maybe at the last second, perhaps, they called it foul. Yep, so they will reset back on base. Two balls, one strike. Swing and again foul. We're noticing her connection, it's kind of dropping right at home plate. She needs to just get a little bit more loft on that swing, kind of try to drive the ball upwards. Here coach saying barrel up. Swing and that's exactly what we needed her to do, trying to get to first. She will be out and the side is retired. Colonials do drive in a, a run. 1-0, they lead it here, heading into the fourth. Some nice hitting. So, uh, for anyone at home here tuning in, at the end of the inning we saw the Colonials had a ball that was hit. Play went over towards first. Runner was tagged out at first, so that would negate the run that was heading towards home plate. So Colonials thought they could have had two there, but they were able to at least get one. Again, base is getting loaded with the pairing of Kane. I'm sorry, with Perez, Gaiman, and Kane all getting on base. Carr able to get in a sack RBI. So that'll be nice on her stat sheet. Again, in the fourth inning, Colonials have mercy rolled a couple of these games where if you're up by 10 runs, by the end of the fifth inning you then automatically win the game. And currently, they're on pace to be playing a full seven innings. There's only 1-0. Tenet is putting up a fight, and I, I believe they do not want to have, you know, that long bus ride back home. Colonial six and five again. Six, seven and five sounds a lot better than six and five. Try and just keep improving. Currently, they ranked 23rd in the district, which would qualify them for playoffs. So they want to keep their foot on the gas and advance to the postseason. First pitch is a strike for Moore. That'll be another strike. I or no, a ball. It's pretty close to the zone now. And that one will be hit in the outfield. Oh, and goes past the fielder. This could be trouble here for the Colonials. She will slide safely in the second. Now see, this is where Tennant really would like to get the momentum, their adrenaline, their blood pumping here. No outs, runner on second. Really nice hit to start off the inning. Moore's been having herself a pretty good day with striking out a lot of these hitters. You want to be able to figure out the feel after having faced her several times. Swing and a miss here. Now you're starting to get a feel for what she's throwing. You want to try driving runs, even the tally back up with the Colonials. Down the middle, that'll be a strike. One, one count. No outs here in the top of the fourth. Another one, two strikes, one ball. Moore looking to try to get herself out of what could possibly be spelling trouble here. And a nice strike right down the center for Moore. That is her sixth of the day. One out here for Tennant. Moore starting to find her zone again. A little bit high. Ball one. Runner on second. Here, 
Another strike here. Moore dealing out a couple pretty nice pitches this inning for some strikes. One ball, one strike. A little low, that'll be a ball. For Tennant, again, you had such a nice hit to start the inning. You would hate to see here another batter retire, and then you're in that situation with two outs where you're unable to get a sack play. And a swing and a miss. Two strikes here, two balls, one out. Top of the fourth, 1-0, Colonials lead it. Tennant trying to dig into that lead. Swing and a miss, got her. Some wonderful pitching here by Molly Moore. That's her seventh strikeout of the inning. Two outs, runner on second here. Tennant's going to need a play here where there is no sacrifice involved to get some runs in. That one right near the strike zone, but they'll call it a ball. One ball, zero strikes. Popped up. That will go behind the Colonial bench. One strike, one ball. Two outs here. Another foul ball. Two strikes here, Moore with a little bit of a scary situation with such a nice leadoff hit, but she was able to answer back pretty quickly with two quick outs. Now looking to try to get that third. Seven strikeouts here for Moore. And another foul ball. A little bit high for a ball. Two balls, two strikes. Good eye there by Tennant to not try to feel the heat coming. Pressure trying to even it up with the Colonials. Popped up. Kane trying to get it. And she, whoa, juggles it in. Is able to make sure she gets the out. Side is retired. Colonials now. Basically the halfway point of this game going into the bottom of the fourth. 1-0, they lead it. Pretty defensively minded game so far compared to their past three. Fig Tennant's getting some looks offensively that they like. Um, they had that really nice hit to start off the second. They had two successful bunts, so certainly they, they, they've been getting some looks. Colonials are starting to feel themselves offensively. Last inning, three consecutive batters get on base. They're able to drive in a run. That was, that was a really sticky situation for Tennant that they're thanking their stars and stripes. It didn't end up being a possibly three, four run implosion that then starts to really fuel just this Colonial run. Colonials are going to need to score nine runs this inning and hold Tennant to none in the next inning if they want to mercy roll this one. So I'm thinking, folks, you're going to want to stick around to the seventh. On deck, Moore. She's 0 for 1 with the strikeout. Again, for Molly in this game, I just I only play baseball a little bit, folks. I'm not going to try to pretend I'm a uh, an, an ex baseball player that had brilliant skill, but I could certainly tell you I never played pitcher. And for anyone that pitches and then bats the middle of the lineup, that means that you're pretty good if you're not at the bottom. So that means Moore's got herself a little bit of a swing. That'll be foul. And I just find it so impressive when you see a really aggressive pitcher that swings because it's. You're exerting so much of your energy pitching, and then you come out and you're 
barreling up with the bat, I mean, I, I you really got to like it. And that's one of the things I love about high school baseball is that it gives you that opportunity to see some pitchers that can hit. Drills that one to third base, but again, thought that could have cracked through into that outfield and possibly gave her a single. So now is Duddick with her first at bat of the game. She saw Dan Caffrey, she will foul. Swing and a miss. Two strikes here. Duddick swinging pretty aggressively here at these first two pitches. Might want to see her settle down a little bit here. Swing and a miss. She's out. One, two, three pitches there for Tennant. Two outs. 1-0 Colonials lead here at the bottom of the fourth. Here is Price. 0 for 1 here so far. Ball's high. Hits that one right to the pitcher. Sides are tired. One, two, three. Inning four, William Tennant. And that will put us into the fifth inning. 1-0. Colonials still holding on to that lead. Kind of trying to say if they could change that. Game moving pretty quickly here. So we are already in the fifth inning. Again, that's one of the beauties of a great defensive game is they can they can move right on through. For those of us tuning in that are offensively minded, I do apologize. If you're looking for one of the Colonials' previous games, they're cracking over 10 runs. I'm not quite sure we're going to see that. But again, never say never. We are still just in the fifth inning. We saw earlier the skies were gray. It was a little bit overcast, but now it is currently blue skies, a lot of sun. Just a beautiful day for softball here in Colonial School District. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Aggressive first pitch swing there for Tennant. That will be another strike. Called strike here. Moore really in the zone right now. And a third strike in a row. Make that eight strikeouts for more on the day. <clears throat> Ball. Moore really showing off the power in her arm here. That will be a strike. One ball, one strike. She's got a really nice strike zone right now, and it's just she's getting a really nice velocity. 
And a bunt, but it will be foul. Two strikes, one ball. One out. And another strikeout here for Moore. She is dealing nine on the day. It was a one, two, three inning for Tennant. We'll see if the Colonials can follow that act in this inning. I'm sorry, in this half inning at the Wow, Moore right now is just feeling it. Almost every pitch this inning has been a strike. She's really just that strike zone. It's, she's just putting it right where she wants it, having really nice feel right now. Signal bunt. That will be a strike. Two strikes here. Looking to try to get three strikeouts in just this inning alone here for Moore. And another one. One, two, three. Sit down, William Tennant. That's the 10th strikeout of this inning. And the Colonials right now, defensively, are giving Tennant quite a bit of trouble. Bottom of the fifth. Colonials lead at 1-0. Looking to try to build on that here. one -oh is the score here, bottom of the fifth. Colonials really defensively can't really do any wrong right now. Offensively had a really nice third inning where they were able to drive in a run after several hits. Gaiman looking to try to get another hit here. She's one for one with a single. Low for a ball. And she hits that one up high. We'll see if the fielder can chase that one down. It drops. That will be a single for game, and she is two for two today with two singles. Here's Marissa Perez. One for one, she had a bunt, able to get on base. Ooh, and she was signaling bunt again, wild pitch. And Gaiman will take second, runner in scoring position, no outs. Bottom of the fifth here, Colonial starting this inning off just the way I think they envisioned it. See if Prez here could have another successful bunt, and then we're really cooking. And she'll drive that one. Ooh, dropped. And safe at first. Gaiman will advance to third. Tricky, tricky there. Gaiman, she noticed that third baseman kind of moved a little bit after the throw to first, trying to get out Perez. And that will advance her to third. Runner on first, runner on third. No outs. Colonials in a nice spot right now. Rosenberger, 0 for 2, two strikeouts, signals, bunt. Advancing is Perez, runner on second and third. Wonderful situational baseball right now by the Colonials. Really heads up. They're, they're noticing as soon as the ball isn't going where it needs to go, getting to the next base, getting all about driving in runs, and they're really understanding that right now. 
One strike here for Rosenberger. Here's some words of encouragement from the bench from our teammates. We'll call that one a strike, a little bit low. Again, with Carly not being the tallest player out there, her strike zone is a little bit different from another player, but I thought that was still a little bit low. Swings, pops that one up. I like it, though. She really stepped into that one and hit it. Just want to get it a little bit more on the upper part of the bat, but definitely like to see her going aggressively here. Not going out silently at two strikes. She pops that one up high. We'll see here. Caught by the outfielder. Gaiman fell as she tried to tag up. She's trying to go back to third in a little bit of a pickle here, trying to run past. Oh, she's going home. And out. We, we think she was safe. Great hustle. We, we see her head coach. A little bit of a dispute with that. Now, I'll say this. The runner did not score. But that was some of the best heads-up base running I've seen. Probably, well, I've never caught softball games really that I've ever seen. And it was just the ability of she, so the ball was popped up and it was caught. She tagged up and fell. So she's starting off the ground, is able to get up, ball's thrown to the third baseman, is able to dodge out the third baseman and the pitcher. Able to dodge out both the first baseman and the third baseman. I'm sorry, the pitcher and the third baseman. Slides home and barely out. See her coach not too happy with that call, but still, great effort. Lauren Kane now looking to try to do some damage. She had a single last at bat. Runner on third, that is Perez. One one is the count, one ball, one strike. Two outs here for the Colonials. Kane getting a nice rip on that one. That will drive in a run. Perez gets home, and Kane with an RBI single. Colonials build on their lead. 2-0 is the score, bottom of the fifth. Talia Carr 0 for 2. Pops that one up high, and that will be caught. Side is retired. Colonials are able to drive in a run. 2-0 is the score going into the sixth. If you're William Tennant, your offense needs to get it going here a little bit as now they are down two runs. Moore is dealing right now on the mound, so that will be an arduous task. If there's one thing in baseball or softball you don't want to face, it's a pitcher that is just hot and is retiring the side quickly, and right now that's what you have in Moore trying to get a complete game no signs of faltering at all. Colonials warming up. Tenant on deck. Two L is the score, top of the sixth.
Strike one here on the first pitch. Check swing. Call that a ball. One ball, one strike. Tenant really got to get the bats warmed up here as they're down 2 0. Really having trouble all game trying to get runners on base. Ball's popped high. And again, trying to take out the voice of CITV. That one went right over my head. I'm not going to lie to you. That one really scared me a little bit. Two strikes, one ball. That will be a ball. And that one is driven deep in the outfield over the outfielder. This will be trouble. Going three, very aggressive base running by Tennant with the triple. In most situations, you'll take that as a double easy. Tell them stay at second. You want to get a runner on base. But currently in the situation Tennant's in, they need to get runners advancing on bases and making some of those plays are a little bit gutsy. And that was some really quick base running on a beautiful hit down in the center field. Goes right over the head of Price. And now, Tennant trying to get their answer back here for the Colonials. And we have a bunt caught by Sue. Heads up play, running down to make the play. Moore again, she uh, currently has a scoreless outing right now and she wants to keep it that way. As someone call it a shutout, they call it a Cheerio. She wants her Cheerio right now. Foul ball. One out. Swing and a miss. Two strikes, one out, 2 0. Colonials lead, runner on third for Tennant. Big time here for Molly Moore if she's able to quiet the bats, and she does. You could see immediately after that strike, her teammates are all yelling words of encouragement. They're, they're jumping up, there's excitement. Rallying behind the pitcher. You love to see that. Team really is a family. Two outs here. Moore inherited a really rough situation with a runner on third. No outs. And now she's a lot more comfortable throwing a lot more of those pitches. We know that she has been throwing this entire game. That will be a ball. One ball, one strike, two outs. Top of the sixth. Now be a ball. Two balls, one strike. And we have another strike here. Molly Moore looking to get her 11th strikeout of the inning. Ooh, and hits a batter. Man, that's unfortunate. Now there's a runner on first and third with two outs. Moore had what looked like it was going to be that 11th strikeout. And then just the last second, that ball tailed into the back of the batter. Again, we see teammates are all coming over. We see the coaches talking to tenant batter this is a big situation right now in the in the tide of this game it's 2-0 you 
you give up that run, 2-1, it is not a comfortable one-run lead. It's not a comfortable two-run two run lead, to be completely honest with you, but especially here, Colonials want to leave this inning without giving up a run here. Tennis coach talked to his batter. We'll see. Ooh, and a wild throw to third. Kane unable to handle it. And now the score is 2-1. A routine play back to third turn bad after it left the glove. And that advanced the runner home. More shutout is no more. Swing and a miss. It's all about resiliency here. Even if you give up a run, don't have your head down. More to get out of this inning with one run considering the way it started. That is fine. Foul ball. Two strikes here. Two outs. Colonials are going to try to get away from this inning with only giving up one run. That would be a whole lot better than two and the game being tied. Again, we're in the sixth inning. This is this is crunch time for both, both teams, really. Swing and a miss. 11th strikeout for Moore. One run scores for Tennant. Folks, you we we have quite a game for you all to watch today. As this has been quite a dominant pitching performance by Molly Moore with eleven strikeouts. And this is this is big, big baseball. Colonials batting now, bottom of the sixth. They're up one run. This is when your lineup shows its strength, shows they could dig deep, and that people in all different spots and all different places can contribute to a win here. It says something about the resiliency of Moore again. A little bit of a shaky inning, a couple mistakes that weren't her fault. One really nice triple. That really spelled disaster. I thought that that possibly could have been leading to a scenario where the game gets tied. And despite all of that, she's able to stick with what's been working. She's able to strike out that last pitcher. And now we're at the bottom of the sixth. Colonials still have their lead. Hannah Sue is a big at bat here starting off this inning. Being able to get on base, possibly give the Colonials that cushion they need if they're able to drive in a run. <clears throat> this is again, Colonials are 23rd in the district. Comfortable but not too comfortable for playoffs. This is a win that you really would like to have, especially versus a William Tennant opponent that is, is pretty good. They're, I believe, second or third in their division. Being able to win this would be a big mental victory for the Colonials, knowing that they can hold on to the lead. Last game, the Colon last time the Colonials lost, which was four games ago, it was a 7-3 loss for a Satterton. They were leading early in that game, and then in the middle of the game, uh, all things, we'll say, broke loose, and... It ended up being a runaway victory for Satterton. So Colonels would really like to know that they can have a lead and hold the lead and walk away with this one with the W. One ball here for Sue. She's 0 for 2. Foul ball. 1-1 one, one count here. And that one barely fouled right near that line. Two strikes, one ball for Sue. Really would like to see her get a hit here. Go, 
And Sue with a liner towards second, trying to run the first. She'll be safe. Wow. Put it right in the infield. Usually a play that will get you out, but she's able to gun those legs forward and is safe at first. This is big here. Molly Moore. That'll be a ball. Moore 0 for 2. Lays the bat out at first. Another ball. Hey, you'll take a free walk here anytime you can get it. Getting two of the leadoff batters of the inning on base, that would be very nice for the Colonials here. Tenant really pitching here needs to settle down and ball's ripped up high, hoping it drops down foul. Oh my goodness, in a rare drop. And that will get Sue out. Sometimes in that kind of situation, it's a pretty, um, Pretty easy play to make, so you're expecting it to be made. And the fact that it wasn't, it then eluded itself to with the runner not advancing. And now they're being one out. But hey, that that's fine. One out, two ones a score, bottom of the sixth. Swing and a miss. Haley Lindley at bat here. She rips that one deep. And that could be trouble for Tennant here. Flying on home, she's gonna go to third. She'll be safe. And a huge RBI triple for Lindley. Colonials up two, one out. Scores three, one, bottom of the sixth. Big time RBI triple for Haley Lindley. Here's number seven, Molly Lynch. Low in the dirt. Ball one. Clone was able to build on that lead. So important here as they're coming down towards the wire of this one. That will be a called strike. One ball, one strike. Lynch, also one of the key members of that field hockey team that every year really is just running the tables. So she is a two-sport athlete. One ball, two strikes. That won't be high. Ball three. Here you don't have to swing if you're Molly. Again, if that ball just a little bit in the wrong direction, don't even think about it. Let them call it a ball and take your base. And she'll swing and line that one to first. Slides and is safe at home. Lindley heads up base running. Lynch driving in the run. Four one, the Colonials lead it here. Bottom of the sixth. Hitting has erupted here in this bottom of the sixth, getting two runs. Now Gaiman, two for two right now. Look at that on. And you can see the way she's swinging the bat right now. She has some confidence and some swagger, for sure. Again with that run that scored, that was a. Pretty easy put out from 
first to home and Lindley somehow able to outrun the throw and get safe. Two strikes, two outs here. Gaiman looking to try to keep this scoring spray alive. Swain and miss, got her. That's the end of the inning. And now, all that separates the Colonials from a victory is a half inning. They've only given up one run this game, adding on two in the sixth. Colonials are in a very comfortable spot, main thing. No errors. Keep with consistent play that they've been doing. And let Moore just keep on wheeling and dealing as she has been. 11 Ks on the day. Quite the pitching performance, if I do say so myself. Moore looking to complete the game here for a complete game for herself. Again, quite performance here. Three outs, that's all that separates us away from a seven and five record for these Lady Colonials. I moved them to four and out in their last four games. Four now in their last four, and four and one in the last five. Again, they're starting to take form here right at the right time. Aggressive swing at the first pitch. Fouled behind him. Definitely feel a little bit of the urgency here for William Tennant. Another foul, two strikes here. Got a lot of encouragement here, especially from Carly Rosenberger, one of the senior leaders on this team for her pitcher. That one's lined in the outfield for a single. If you're a tenant, that's what you need to kind of take some of the suspense off here. Get some runners on base. Get some runs in. You're right back in this thing with no outs at the top of the seventh. Colonials would really like a double play here. Swing and a miss. Oh, unable to corral it at home. And she will advance to second. Runner on second, no outs. One ball, one strike here for Tennant. And that will be a ball. Two balls, one strike. No outs. Runner on second, Colonials lead. 4-1, top of the seventh. And a bunt. And they will call that a strike. So that will be the 12th strikeout for more today. One out, runner on second, William Tennant feeling the heat as they are down three. Low, that'll be a ball.
They will call that a strike. One ball, one strike, one out. Top of the seventh. Swing, driven, caught. And now all the Colonials need is one more out. And this one's on ice. Colonials with a really big sixth and third inning. Seeing them score two runs in each, that's how they were able to get their four runs. And uh, defense today, besides a little bit of a hiccup in the sixth, has been steady, only allowing one run. Two outs, one strike. And that will be ball, one ball, one strike here. William Tennant trying to not go out silently here. Molly Moore will tie her shoe. See the coach of Tennant real quick talking to his batter. Trying to get something going here. Again, it's not impossible, but certainly their work is cut out with two outs, down three runs in the top of the seventh. We have a bunt, perhaps that's what they were talking about. Two strikes, one strike, or an out is all that separates the Colonials from this seventh win on the year. More winds, throws, and that's the ball game, folks. Colonials take it. 4-1 here. Great team victory. Pitching by Molly Moore was excellent with 13 strikeouts to finish her day. I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in and watching our live stream. I also want to thank our executive producer, Tom Peeler, uh, camera crew with Carly Tier and Nick Cruz. Again, this has been a presentation of CITV with our coverage of Lady Colonial Softball. We thank you for tuning in, and until next time, take care. <laughs>